Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to use Seed Miner to get Boot 9 Strap. There are a couple different methods that you can choose to get this done, and I'll be including the steps needed to get both methods completed in this video. There will be timestamps telling you when to skip ahead and when to keep watching, so just follow the full video and do as I say, and you'll be good. So option number one, if you already have Homebrew on your console, then section one of this video is very simple. All you need to do is download the seed miner package that I have linked in the video description, then copy the seed starter folder into your 3DS folder on your SD card, like this. Once you've got it copied, you can eject your SD card and put it back into your console. This is all for section 1, so now on screen you'll see timestamps you can jump to because you don't need to follow the other method of doing section 1. So if you have a friend who has CFW on their system, then you should start off by adding them on your 3DS. Make sure both of you have each other added. I'm going to demonstrate how to do this with my old 3DS and my new 3DS, but it's very simple, you should be able to figure this out on your own. So once you've got them added, they should probably watch this video from this point on because I'm pretty much going to be talking to them and you don't have to do much else. The friend needs to download the seed mining package, which I'll have linked in the video description, and place this seed starter folder into their 3DS folder on their SD card, like this. Once they've got this done, they can continue watching this video because we're going to move on to section 2 now. So now, you or your friend, depending on which method you chose, needs to launch Homebrew. If you don't have Homebrew, then you obviously chose to have a friend do this for you, so they'll be the ones launching Homebrew and you don't have to follow along unless you want to. Inside of the Homebrew menu, open up the Seed Starter application. You should see two options. If you're doing this yourself, press A to dump your own friend seed. If you're having a friend do this for you, then they should press B to dump the friend seeds from their friend list. Once that's done, close out of Homebrew and put the SD card from the console back into a PC. Now on the 3DS SD card, you should see a folder called Seed Starter. If you dump the seeds from your friends list to help someone else out, then you should see a folder called LFCS, and inside of that should be all the seeds from your friends list. Find the one that has your friend's friend code in the name, and rename it to movable underscore part one dot sed. Then upload this file anywhere you want, and then send it to your friend who's trying to install Homebrew, and then they should download it and have the file on their computer. If you dumped your own, then right inside of the seed starter folder, you should see movable underscore part one dot scd. If you downloaded your movable part one dot scd from a friend, then you have one extra step you need to do. Copy the movable underscore part one dot scd that you downloaded into the seed miner PC folder that's included in the package that you downloaded earlier. Once that's copied, right click on the seed miner underscore launcher dot bat file and click edit. Now go into your 3DS's SD card and copy the name of the folder inside of the Nintendo 3DS folder. This is unique to each 3DS console. Paste it where it says ID0 here. Save the file and then run it. It should add the ID0 into the movable.scd. It didn't add mine because I already had mine added into it. So for this next step, we're going to be using your PC's processing power to brute force your movable.scd file. It's recommended that you have a dedicated graphics card, but if you don't, you can still do this. Make sure you copy your movable part one .scd into the seed starter PC folder that was included in the download that you got earlier. 
Now right click on the seedminer underscore launcher dot bat file and click edit. Replace all of the stuff after the file name with either CPU or GPU. This is what will be used to brute force the key. If you have a dedicated GPU, then type GPU, but if you don't, then type CPU. It'll take about 1-5 to five hours if you have a dedicated graphics card, but it could take up to a few days if you use your CPU. This all depends on how strong your PC is. Once you've done this, you can save and close the file, and then run it. Your PC may become unresponsive. This is actually a somewhat good sign, it means that it's doing its job. Wait for it to complete. As I said before, it may take a long time. Once it's done, you should see a movable.sed file alongside the movable part 1 SED that you placed earlier. Keep this safe because you're going to be using it with Tadpole. So now hopefully I've gotten you to this section and now you'll need to follow some written instructions. I'm not showing any of these steps in a video because they can change a lot and it would be safest just to follow the written directions. So in the video description, I've left some links that you should follow to continue installing Boot9 Strap. So yeah, this is all I have for you today, so thanks for watching. Leave a like if this video helped you, comment if you need help or if you want to help anyone else out, and subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and I'll see you next time.